Another blood red sunset and yet another moon phase and still another hundred miles to my next resting place Driving down the road, eyes on the horizon Within my car I'm all alone But feeling good and feeling strong Knowing that this path I'm on brings me to myself I'm driving Hey now all, I'm Joey C. Welcome back to another episode of Spirit Sherpa. This is the show that encourages you and helps you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. With me, as always, is the spirit doctor, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back, Kelly. Hey, Joe. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Today, we are talking about something that was not my strong suit in high school. Now, I studied the periodic table in high school, <laughs> and I was never very good with it. And you said, you said, let's talk about elements today. And I'm like, well, you know, magnesium and all of that. Is that what we're talking about when <laughs> no. we're talking about spiritual elements? <laughs> no, we're going to talk about the elements as in the four elements, earth, air, fire, water. Oh, that's not the same. No, no, not okay. even remotely. <laughs> all right. Okay. So how do the elements apply? I want to talk about the elements as, as a foundation. Okay. Right? So in any pagan belief structure, not any, but... Almost all. There are the four elements, which also relate to the four seasons, which also relate to different aspects of life. Okay. So for instance, earth represents the north. It is the, the cold of winter. It is the, the time of going within into the void and in shamanic practice, it is often associated with bear. And other earth related animals. So you could do bear, you could do gopher, you could do, you know, anything that burrows, right? Um, bears go into caves to hibernate. They live in caves. So things of that nature. Then you have air, which is associated with the east in most practices. In some practices, they associate fire with the east because the sun comes up in the east. They can be flipped. Uh, the the two formats I've seen are earth, air, fire, water, which is where you see in the vast majority of, of pagan practices. But there's also earth, fire, air, water in some practices. So, so were you going when you said that you were going earth, north, air, east, fire, fire south, south, and water west. Water west. Okay. Yeah. And air is the realm of the mind. It's the realm of where messages come in from. We associate the animals hawk and eagle with the element of air because, you know, they fly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll call in butterfly or dragonfly, right? Mm -hmm. Because they fly or bumblebee. You could do that too, mm -hmm. right? You call in the animal that's associated with the energy that you want to bring in as you're calling in the elements. So we use the elements to, to cast circle, right? Okay. To create a circle. In the South, you're going to be in fire and in transformation and healing and in clarity. Fire burns away, burns away. all that is not needed and creates clarity, right? You'll, you'll work with snake. Snake is, is associated with healing. If you don't believe me, look at the caduceus sometime, mm. right? Because the snake sheds its skin and leaves behind a previous life and moves forward. It's it's a rebirth process. Um, or salamander is also associated with fire. fire. In the West, you go into water, which is in emotions and the depths of those emotions and the hidden places, right? You can get hidden places in the North as well as in the dark, deep, dank caves, but you can also get the watery depths of hidden hidden places as well. So you you pull in the energy of what you want in your environment for your creation as you're casting a circle, right? You call the quarters, you invite in the quarters, and you say, I want the element of north, of of winter, of the deep, dark void of going within, of letting go of all that is, of diving deep into the sense of self and being quiet within. 
I want that energy. Please come be with me as I cast this circle of power. I come to the east and I call in the element of air of the hawk, which brings me messages from my guides and from, from the other realms to guide me on my journey of the east of the springtime as spring comes into form and brings us the growth and rebirth into the newness of our life to come. I call you, please come be with me and help create this sphere of power. I call to the element of the south, of fire, of that which clarifies and burns away all that is no longer needed, of the energy of transformation and growth and healing, of that heat of summer and the, the bringing of the harvest. Come, come be with us and help me to create this sphere of power. I call to me the element of west, of water, of the, the depths that, that go within, of the, the feelings of warmth and love and of allowing and accepting all that is such that we may bring about our transformation into this space. Come bring with you the wisdom of whale the playfulness of dolphin, that we may not take our transformation too seriously, <laughs> that we may not take ourselves too seriously as we journey together. Come, come, be with us and help me create the sphere of power. And, and then you come back to the north to complete your circle. And then you call in Pachamama, Mother Earth, come, come, be with us. Come feed us, nourish us, support us, and ground us on our journey into self-discovery. Father Sky, come, come down, come down from the heavens where you look over us and you watch us and you, you take care of us, where you, you know what is to come because you are so high up that you can see the future and see the past and provide us with our knowledge of what is to come and remind us of our history of what has been and allow us to have the wisdom of the both. Come, come be with us and participate in our transformation this day. We call to center to that which is within us, that which is connected to all that is. Come, come be with us. Come connect us to our ancestors, to ourselves, to one another. Come be with us and remind us that we are all one and that we have all the support that we need in this process of transformation. Come create the sphere of power with us together and create the transformation we have come to allow in our lives in this moment. Okay. Wow. I actually feel like you just created a sphere here right now. It was pretty powerful. I did. <laughs> I'm, I'd be stunned if listeners don't feel the sphere in their room. So within this space, you do your work. Okay. You asked me, how do we use the elements? Right. So how right? do we use the elements? Yeah. That's how we use the elements. We call the elements into being. We call them into our space. We call them into support of ourselves and our lives. All of these elements together make up the, the spark of life. They create for us the solidness of our experience of being in physical space. And so within that, we ask them to lend their energies, lend their support to our endeavors. It's known as sympathetic magic, right? We ask for that support from that element. And then once we have our safe container, which we've just created in this process, then we call in whoever we feel like we need to have in this space with us. So the elements that we're talking about are very, they're known to us. These are things that we know. They're yes. very much in the physical. Are we calling to them from their physical or from a different realm? Yeah, you're calling the the spirit of the thing, mm -hmm. right? So, so you're not calling Earth itself, right? Because I, if you think about it, I called Earth and then I called Pachamama, Pachamama. Mama, yeah. Mother Earth, right? Yeah. They're different. I'm calling the element of Earth, mm -hmm. you know, the element of the rocks, of the trees, of the dirt. 
I'm calling that element and the, 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 the characteristics of that element. So the element versus the physical thing. Right. Exactly. And the difference between Earth and Pachamama, Mother Earth, is Earth is the stone people and the tree people and the blades of grass. It's the pieces and parts of the the whole. Mm -hmm. Whereas Pachamama is the consciousness of the planet, which is different than the Earth elemental. Yeah. Right? So that's the differential between those two. Wow. That is pretty awesome and i'll tell you i would recommend for those folks listening that you just go back and listen to that section again because the the intensity of that i I have a feeling that people are going to love that part of this well and and what you call you must banish when you're done if you summon it it's your job to banish it it. so you you don't want to leave magical house yeah you don't want to leave your circles up okay you don't want to leave your circles up so i've created a circle here i must close it yeah before the episode ends um, or else that would be bad yeah, right? for all those listening as well. Well, it would be bad. It, uh, yeah, it'd be bad in a lot of ways. Yeah. But you don't want to leave your circles up because they're not designed to stay up. Okay. There are ways to create things that are more permanent. Those are called wards. Mm-hmm. But circles are meant to be temporary, much like a mandala. Right? Okay. And so when you call it, you must also release it. Okay. So you notice that I took a fair amount of time to call into being this circle, mm-hmm. right? And this will call into being a circle in your space if you listen to that, mm-hmm. right? And if you intend for it to call it for you, it will call it for you. So if you wanted to take this podcast and edit out the sections, <laughs> and, and, you know, just use the opening and the closing, you could totally do that mm-hmm. and it would create a circle for you, mm-hmm. okay? I put the energetic into it, so... Mm-hmm. Borrow it until you know how to use it, right? (laughs) So you do your work within this space, and then you take it down. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to take it down so that you can feel what that's about. The the putting up is important that you put a lot of intention into the putting up because it's creating the space. The releasing is much less time-consuming because you're just letting go what you had. You're not having to define what you're creating, Right. Right. And so when you release, what you do is you give thanks to those who came to support. And so you have to remember what you called. (laughs) And then you have to, in the reverse order you called it, release it. So you spun it in, then you spin it back out. This is the other reason why it's important to, to work a system that you do consistently. Yeah. Because when you're in magical space, your brain does exactly what your brain is doing. Your brain goes fuzz. Yeah. Right? And that's exactly what happens. So you want to work a system that you do consistently so that you remember. Okay. So we ended on center. Okay. Okay. So we're going to spin out on center. We give thanks to center, to that which connects us all. Thank you. Thank you for being here for our working this day. Stay if you will. Go if you must. But know if you go, you go with our love and gratitude. We give thanks to Father Sky. Thank you for your wisdom, for your support. Stay if you will, go if you must, but know if you go, you go with our love and gratitude. We give thanks to Pachamama, Mother Earth. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your sustenance. Thank you for being with us for this working this day. Stay if you will, go if you must, but know if you go, you go with our love and gratitude. We give thanks to West, to Water, to the whale and the dolphin. Thank you for sharing with us your wisdom and your wonder. Stay if you will, go if you must, but know if you go, you go with our love and gratitude. We give thanks to South, to the fire, to salamander and snake. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for bringing us clarity and healing. Stay if you will, go if you must, but know if you go, you go with our love and gratitude. We give thanks to East, to Air, to the Hawk, who brings us the messages. Thank you for your messages. Thank you for your wisdom. Stay if you will, go if you must, but know if you go, you go with our love and our gratitude. And we give thanks, finally, to Earth, to North, to Bear, to the depths of the void within, to the wisdom acquired within us. Stay if you will, go if you must, but know if you go, you go with our love and our gratitude. The circle is expanded, but never broken. 
So mote it be. That was remarkable. Thank you very much. And thank you for sharing that with us all. All right. So let's, let's transition quickly into Ask Kelly. I've often seen uh, physical symbols used when people are talking about things like the elements. Mm-hmm. Is that necessary when you're when you're obviously not because you didn't have them? <laughs> um, you just did that. But uh, is that something that you would normally do from a ritualistic perspective? So the the physical symbols that you see are more often used in alchemy okay. than in pagan practice. Okay. The elements are also used in alchemy. Mm-hmm. And depending upon who you ask, uh, the alchemist, some alchemists will tell you that they are actually pursuing the the lead to gold, uh, and others will say no, it's a metaphor for the turning of, from the of the spirit from lead to gold. I see. But the elements are used as well in in that practice. In Chinese medicine, uh, they use the four elements, but they add a fifth element, which is metal. Hmm. And in the the Dagara tradition, they will also add in mineral. And so, you know, in different cultures, you'll have different elements as well, to, you know, what they consider to be an element. But the vast majority are using four. And then, so if you consider the the star, mm-hmm. the pentacle, right? So the star is the four elements and on the two sides, right? And then the top one, the top of the head, if you were thinking of the Vitruvian mm-hmm. man, right? Uh, the top of the head would be spirit. So it's earth, air, fire, water, spirit. And then the circle represents protection. So that's that magical the circle, circle that itself. we just created, yeah. right? So it's, uh, it's uh, the star is, a, the pentacle is a five-pointed star with earth, air, fire, water, and spirit hmm. um, surrounded by protection. So cool. Yeah. Wow. All right. So it's time for us to to bring this one to a close here. But again, we're at my favorite part of the show, <laughs> which is when Kelly gives us our, our little homework assignments on things that we can uh, we can learn and, and take to, to go even deeper here. So what do you got? Remember the last episode, we talked about the triggers, right? Oh, yeah. The, yep. the, the triggers that we have. Those triggers all are blocks in our energy field. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some of the triggers are symptoms of the blocks and some of the triggers are the blocks themselves, right? So one of the things that I offer people is the ability to be able to go in and look at your energy field. So I can actually, and I prefer to do this over the phone hmm. and, and not over Zoom, not in person. And the reason I prefer to do it this way is that I want you to know that I am not reading your facial expression or your body language or anything else that I'm just reading your energy field. So when we do it over the phone, all I have is your voice and your energy, right? And I literally don't give you a lot of time to talk (laughs) because I don't want you to think that I took anything out of what you said, right? Mm -hmm. So what I do is what I call a spiritual diagnostic energy scan, And what I do is I go into your energy field with permission and I read your field. So I'll look at the aura. I'll look at each individual chakra and I'll tell you what I'm seeing in each chakra and in the aura and how those things are likely playing out in your life. And then once we get through the entire read, I will go back through and I will say, okay, these two or three blocks are related to one another And you want to do the work on this one first and then that one. And then don't even worry about this one because that'll disappear when you do these two pieces. So don't work on that at all. And then, you know, after you do those two pieces, then you come down to these other three blocks that we found down here. And this is the order for doing that work. And so I basically am giving you a roadmap to the most efficient path to clearing your blocks. Hmm. And if I can tell you exactly how to do it in the moment that we're in it, because it's a quick fix, then I will do that. If I can't, then I'll suggest a path to to get there for you. But you'll have, by the time you get done, you'll have a really clear picture of everything that's going on in your energy field that's creating the, the experience that you're having in life. And you will have an idea of exactly what you need to do um, in terms of action steps to take 
to to get to the next stage in your process of removing those. Wow. So, and this is a service that you offer. Yes. And they can get information about this at kellysparta.com? kellysparta.com, online programs. Mm -hmm. If you click on the online programs button in the menu, it'll take you in. You look for spiritual diagnostic slash checkup Mm -hmm. because people come back every six months or a year and get a checkup to see how they're doing. And about how long does that take? Takes about an hour. Okay. Yeah. So some people 45 minutes, some people an hour and 15, somewhere around an hour. Yep. Wow. And that's a phone call. So they don't need to be local. Nope. They can be anywhere. Yep. So our listeners from wherever they are can be reaching out and and And, doing this. And we can do it over Zoom if if you're international and you don't want to. Make the phone I don't want to do international rates either. Yeah. (laughs) So, but we can do it over Zoom. I just won't turn the video on. Yeah. Shut the camera off. Yeah. It's just that easy. Wow. Okay. Very cool. So there you go, folks. Another another uh, service that you can check out at kellysparta.com in the online program section. Yep. All right. I think that's all that we have. Yep. Wow. This was this was powerful and probably our most compact episode yet. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> when you run energy, things go faster. <laughs> all right, folks. That is all that we have for this week. Be sure to join us next time as we delve even deeper into the magical world. I'm Joey C. here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Trippa. Good night, everyone. Good night. Each fella over 13,000 now, so I'll leave behind a little fear. Spirit Trippa is the sole property of Kelly Sparta Enterprises and is distributed under Creative Commons BY-NC-ND 4.0 license. For more information about this licensing, please go to creativecommons.org. Any requests for deviations to this licensing should be sent to K-E-L-L-E at K-E-L-L-E-S-P-A-R-T-A dot com. That's Kelly at kellysparta.com. To sign up or to get more information on the programs, offerings, and services referenced in this episode, please go to kellysparta.com. This episode of Spirit Trippa has been produced by Honu Voice Productions. Oh, my love and my